today's project, I'm going to show you how to make a sock bunny. Yes, this is made out of sock, and this bunny is wearing a tutu. I'll show you how to sculpt the face, how to sculpt the arms, and just how to make the body. So, let's have fun. For this project, you will need felt, two buttons, they come in a set of four. They're perfectly round, almost. Thread to coordinate with the color of your sock, sewing needles, good pair of scissors, and tool of your choice of color, and ladies' hairband. Pins and filler, cotton filling. Socks come in pairs, but you only need one. Okay, this is going to be the nose right here. We're going to cut off the ears. We're going to leave enough to make a good head. And then we take our toe pieces and we're going to split it right down the middle. Turn the sock inside out and pin it together where we're going to sew it. The top part of the ears to make them a little bit more narrow, slightly pointed. Pin right sides together before we um, take out the needle and thread to sew these up. And then with a needle and thread, we're going to sew those together. I start off by pulling the thread through the first loop. And then I'm not doing any special stitch really. I'm just going around and pulling it up. I just want to close it up. There's no special trick here. Finish off with a knot, turn inside out, and we're, now we're ready to stuff. We're going to just take small pieces at a time, stuffing it. We don't want to pack it tight. We want to keep the whole body soft so that we are able to sculpt it. As you stuff, try to do it evenly throughout. Um, don't do it too hard because we want the whole thing soft. If we keep it soft, it'll be a whole lot easier to sculpt. Keep in mind, we're also going to separate the head and the neck. So you want to keep it nice and loose right there where you're going to divide it. Do not stuff those little corners that are where the ears are going to go. Don't put any stuffing in that part. To form the head, I used a rubber band to hold it, and then I tied a string around it. Then I removed the rubber band. We'll deal with those funny little points shortly. Now to get rid of the two points that are sticking out, pull them together and stitch them down. This also makes the top of the head a little bit more narrow. Or you could turn it into a cat and do something with those little points. Just reshape them. <laughs> That's something I might try one of these days. If this video is too long, please go see the shortened version. I made this video for all the complaints that my last video was too fast, so I slowed this one down for people who need a little more instruction, a little more time to understand what's going on. To form the legs, we're going to stitch um, from the crotch down to the base of the legs to form two legs. When I sew with a needle and thread, I like to take both ends of my thread and slip them through the needle. So that gives me a loop on one end. And then I use that loop to pull my needle through after I've gone through the fabric. And that's how I kind of start off without having to have a knot and any loose ends sticking out. Now I'm not doing any, anything special here. It's just a simple running stitch back and forth from front to back until I reach the end of the sock cuff. The stuffing manages to uh, find its way back out. You just have to shove it back in. Um, when we get to the very bottom, we want to sew the front to the back to make a separation between the two legs. And I'm going to continue to use that thread for the next phase. Now to close up the bottoms, we're going to use pink felt, just because I think pink looks good with white. And cut two squares of equal size that look about the size of your opening. Cut off the corners 
and then go once more around, trimming off the little corners to get it to be as close to a circle as you can get. Doesn't have to be perfect. That looks about right. That'll work. And then our thread and needle that's still there from sewing down the legs, we could just continue sewing with that. So I start in the center and I'm going to sew all the way around, keep my stitches close together because I don't want stuffing to fall out. And this will give a sturdy base and close up the, the leg hole and the pink just kind of represents the feet. Do the same thing for the other foot, sewing all the way around and when you're finished um, sew a knot, cut your thread and then that completes the feet. The felt gives her a sturdy base where that she can almost stand up on her own two feet. Now for the ears. We're going to continue hand stitching with a needle and thread. When you're all done, turn it inside out. Don't worry about stuffing the ears. There's no need to stuff the ears. We're going to keep it empty. There's enough thickness there with the seams and we're going to add pink felt to be the inside lining of the ears. So I cut two long, um, about the length of the ears, long rectangular shapes and then I uh, trim them a little bit. I want the top end to be just a little bit more rounded or slightly pointed so it's a little narrower at the top. So just shape it so that it looks like it's going to fit and then we are going to hand stitch those onto the ears starting at the bottom, the base, and just going around, stitching it, attaching the pink to the, the, the white. And this actually makes the ears kind of stiff so that they will stand up. They're not floppy ears. Um, they will be stiff enough that they'll kind of stand up on their own, which gives it sort of a, a really cute look. I like to pinch the base of the ears together, take a couple of stitches um, and sew that together. It, it gives the base of the ear a, a little bit more of a natural look to look like a rabbit. It almost creates like a little hole in there as if it would go inside the ear and it gives it a stiffer base as well. Now we're going to roll the edges under and it is, it is kind of thick, but that's okay. We're going to, um, be able to attach this because we don't really want the raw edges sticking out when we sew it on. We're going to kind of pull the back end out a little bit and find where you think you, the ear needs to go. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky getting the ears on perfectly right. Um, so pin it in place and then you're going to hand stitch all the way around the base of the ear until you have the ear secure. Now I came up with this idea for this rabbit because I wanted to make a rabbit for a little girl to give her a quiet toy to play with in church because she was very young. Now you can make the rabbit any color you want. You can make it a boy or a girl, whatever you want. Um, that's really up to your personal choice. I'm just showing you how I did it. And I kind of invented the idea about the tutu that we're going to make for her. So that's why I decided to make a video of this particular model. I also make boy videos, I mean boy rabbits, and I do them with gray socks. I don't know why, I just chose gray socks with pink ear inserts and pink nose. And it is a little challenging to get those ears on exactly straight. I think I got one of them on just a little bit crooked. <laughs> the last one I, I made did the same thing happen. But eh, just do the best you can. If it's a little bit crooked, oh well, you just add a little extra personality. Yes, I'm doing this entire project with a needle and thread. I'm not using a sewing machine. I suppose if you want to, you could use a sewing machine, but I thought I would just do it with a needle and thread. You know, maybe there's somebody out there who would like to make a craft and they don't have a sewing machine. All they've got is a needle and thread. Well, here's something cute you can make. And these would make adorable gifts for maybe little children, babies, or what a great addition to an Easter basket. 
Well, there she is with her little ears that stand up and kind of lean out in a very cute way. Now it's time to do the eyes. I used my seam ripper to remove the staples that held the buttons to the card. They look like round balls, but there's actually a hook on the back. Now, figure out where the eyes need to be. We're going to first start with our thread that's got a loop on it and hold that loop out and then run your needle through the loop and that's how you make the knot. And, and pull it together just, just so you can get it to, not too tight, but um, just so that the eyes will look like they're slightly sunk into the side of your head so it looks more natural like a bunny. You get one ear, one eye on and then you put the other button for the other eye. And you're gonna go back and forth from the right eye to the left eye and vice versa. Um, each time you pass through, don't pull it any tighter. Try to keep the th thickness what, at, what you set it at already. But always go through the loop on the back of the button. I'm using a long needle, so it's easy to um, do this. And you, you do want to make sure they're very secure. So go back through it several times because you do not want those little buttons to fall off um, and be a choking hazard. how it kind of sculpts the eyes a little bit. Her bunny head is looking very much like a real bunny. When you feel that your eyes are secure and you've gone through several times, then I, I, you may still have thread left like I do on my needle. So what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the, through the eye, behind the eye and come out to where the center of the nose would be at the bottom of the nose where the triangle would be. I'm pulling it just a little bit to kind of bring up the center dividing his cheek and then just make short little stitches as we go around the curve. Work our way around the um, cheek, kind of pulling it in just a little bit to create that little bit of a curve, the shape of his, his cheek. And this is what you call sculpting with a needle. Don't pull it too tight, you know, really check your shape constantly to make sure that it's you know what you want it to be. Bring your needle back to the center to start the other cheek. And we'll go down the same place in the middle and make the curve on the other side of the cheek. Now please don't complain, you think I'm talking too much. I am make, made this video specifically for the people who want it to be slowed down. I do have another video that's a whole lot shorter, I think it's only like seven minutes long, that shows the same process, it's just that it's sped up a little bit. Uh, but I think I, I explained clearly how to do it, but for some people that's not enough. So this is a duplicate video, it's just a lot slower, and it's got a little bit more instruction for those people who need the help. Right, those are some cute cheeks. Now for our nose, we're going to use another piece of pink felt into a triangle, cut it into a triangle, um, shaping it, getting it the size that you need that would, that you see that seems appropriate. I curve the top part of it, place that in there, and then we'll continue to use our same thread and needle. We'll start in the very center, and we'll sew the edge of it. Oops, I lost my thread. We'll sew in the very center. And then we'll sew all the way around, attaching the pink felt to the nose. She's a cute little bunny, even if I do say so myself. Now, um, I do try to pull down the two corners on both sides. You can see I'm going into the cheek again, just to make that the nose kind of round a little bit, pulling it down on both sides and then just make a knot and then finish it off. Since this is a little lady we're going to tie a little pink 
bow around her head. I go around twice. Um, we tie a bow with some tool, and once I get it tight and secure, I shorten the um, tie, and then I use um, needle and thread, and I just kind of stitch it in place so that it doesn't come off, because you don't want anything to come off. You want everything to be permanent. And then I also tie a little bow to go on top of the head between the two ears, and I also stitch it on with a couple of stitches um, with a needle and thread because I don't want it to come off. Now to accent the your mouth, since I've got it all sculpted, I mean I could have done the sculpting with the pink, but I, I just feel more comfortable doing it with the white. I don't have to really pull or tug anything. Now this is a embroidery floss. Um, it, it's six ply, so I'm dividing it to three and three. And it really only one piece is all I needed. But I just kind of copy the same stitches that I have before without pulling it too tight because I don't want to make it any tighter than it already is. So just all I want is that color to show that division between the two cheeks and around the cheeks, just to show the mouth. And I do that with pink embroidery floss. I don't know the exact number. I didn't pay attention to that, that color, but any shade of pink will do. See, I hate moments like that where there's just nothing to really say. Um, the video just kind of shows you. Um, that's why I like to try to shorten my videos to give the most information in the short amount of time because some people's attention spans are a little short. But I'm going to let this play so that you can see how I did this. And then I make a little knot in the very center when I finish off. And then I, to hide the thread, I just kind of pull it to the cheek. I've already made a knot and I just kind of pull it that way that the loose end is inside. It's not outside. Well, our little lady is finished. Now we just need to make her tutu. So with the tool, and I've chosen pink, but it could be done in any shade of, of tool that you want. Tool comes in a variety of colors. So I could imagine it in turquoise or blue or teal or purple or whatever color, orange. Um, cut it into one inch strips and then maybe about 10 inches long. And we're going to secure them to the hairband by just folding it in half and then pull the two ends through. And we just keep doing that until we have the entire rubber band um, completely full. And it usually takes about a half a yard, believe it or not, of these strips. When it's all done, I like to secure the tool so that it doesn't get pulled apart by the child. I like to secure it with a needle and thread going all the way around it. Now this is the only part that is going to be removable. So the little girl who plays with this bunny can take it off. But you know what? She can also use this in her hair. So it could be, you know, decoration clothes for the bunny, but it could also be used in the little girl's hair. Because actually it is a hairband. Oh yes, I almost forgot. We have to sculpt arms. Now I'm gonna um, create a little bulge at the front for have our arms come down the side and then as if they were gonna meet and fold in the middle. So we're gonna kind of pinch it right there 
to create. We're going to start in the very center. I'm going to use a curved needle. I think it's a upholstery needle because it just makes it a little easier to get in there and turn. And we're going to, you have to kind of secure the first, the first um, part of it. So I'm going to tie it to itself to give me a starting point so I have something to pull against. Make a few stitches to pull together that, that little bulge. And this is going to be the separation between the two hands. We're going to kind of create two hands coming together. And then um, we're going to just pinching it, but not too tight. And trying to keep the arms, trying to think, consider the shape of the arms. And just stitch back and forth underneath as we create the front of the arm coming over. We, when we get to the elbow, you're going to, in this inside, you're going to keep coming up in the same place, but you're going to change where you come out on the outside of the elbow to help form that elbow. Always check your shape. You don't want to pinch it too much or pull the thread too tight. At this point, I wanted to switch to my longer needle because it's easier for the outside to do the, the upper arm up to the shoulder. And just keep stitching back and forth and pinching it just a little bit. I'm sorry that I'm off the camera. Sometimes I get so wrapped up in what I'm doing I forget to pay attention to what part's in the camera. And I think I did a pretty good job on this side creating a, a shoulder a little bit wider at the top. And I'm going to come back all the way to the very center front because I have to do the other side. So having another row. So you can see the side's done, the left side's done, the right side is not done. It forms a nice little arm, sort of, <laughs> a look of an arm. We just do the same thing on the other side, creating the, the, the arm on the left side. Again, the elbow, you kind of rotate around the elbow. And that's basically how you sculpt little arms. I didn't think about, well, I did do the arms differently on the boy bunny, but um, I just felt like a little girl needed to have something a little different. So I formed her, and I think I made her upper arm just a little bit too skinny. Her shoulder's not the same size as the other side. I finish it off again, back in the middle got a knot and then we put on her tutu and she is completed now. You might need to trim them just a little bit more but there is our little ballerina bunny in a tutu. Isn't she sweet? I hope you have fun with your project and if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.